Hello everyone, it's Amy, and welcome to week 29 of Build Your Stash and Craft. And this week we are going to do paper beads. And so I am going to show you different ways to color your papers prior to making your beads, um, prior to rolling them, to make rainbow beads, and to make different color centers than the outside of your bead. There we've got a black one with a red center and here is a black with a purple center and it is still purple even on the inside. And then we've got a black one here that we've decorated with a white, with our white um, correction marker. These ones, um, these two were started out as white and they were painted with fingernail polish. And then here is one with glitter fingernail polish on an orange bead and clear on a red bead and that gives it a really nice shine. So, and then we've just got the regular paper beads, and then these ones, I kind of think they look kind of like vases. They're flat on the bottom and pointy at the top. And actually, this is my favorite. I like this shape the best, and um, I find that I like to use it on different projects more than the ones that are pointy on both ends, but that's just me. Um, maybe just because they're different because I like different so the first thing that we have to do is we have to cut our paper so we are going to I'm going to show you just how to mark it because you do not want to start with one flat if you start with the flat side and cut an angle and just keep going back and forth what will happen is you will have a flat side and an angled side on every bead um, which is not really that big of a deal but for the regular rolled beads it won't work as well actually for the vase shaped ones it would probably work better so, but what you're going to do then is to make a half inch bead, you will come in and your first mark will be at one quarter of an inch. And then move your ruler over to start new, you know, move it right over to the beginning and then just mark every half an inch. I just find that easier than trying to go a quarter, three quarters, one and a quarter. It's easier to just do, for me, a half an inch, half an inch, half an inch. So you're just going to do it like that. And on the bottom, you are just going to start at the very edge and mark a half an inch. What that will do is that will make that, that will give us an angle at the place where we came in one quarter of an inch. I can't see my half inch mark here. I really can't see it, there it is. Okay, so this where we came in at a quarter of an inch that is going to be where my point is. And when I'm doing these papers and I'm marking them, um, I always do put a little point mark there so that I remember to make that my point when I'm cutting. Because by the time I mark all the way across, and sometimes I'll mark two or three papers at a time, um, you'll do the same thing with, um, let me just cut this in half. You'll do the same thing with, if you wanna do a one inch um, bead, then you will start at a half an inch your first mark will be at a half an inch and then go across every inch we'll just do that here okay my first mark is one half an inch and then I'm going to move my ruler over right to the beginning and mark one two three um, and then at the bottom you'll start right at the edge and you'll just mark one two three four and um, can't see my five there. And this one here, this is where my point is going to be. So that will do some half inch strips and some one inch strips. So I'm going to try and make this so that you can see my board and hopefully this box is sturdy enough to cut. So what we're going to do is we are going to line up our paper. Let me see. All right, I'm gonna line up my first half inch mark. Nope, I'm not. This is gonna be my point, so I wanna come on an angle to here. Okay, so you start at the very edge and come up to this point. So I'm gonna line up that very edge and, and you line it up with this line right here on your holder. Line up the point in the very corner of the paper. Whenever you're cutting, you want to cut wherever your paper is fattest. You don't want to cut the one that's right on the point. Because if you do that, um, it will want to catch your paper and pull it. So we'll take that piece out. Okay, so now what we're going to do 
is we're just going to go back and forth. And what I do is I leave my, my cutter right up there so that I know that that's my wide end. I'm going to come to this point right here and line it up with my first mark that's there now and with the part that I made for my point. And I'm going to go from there to there. Now I'll leave my cutter down here. Take that out. Oh, I didn't push very well at the end. And now I know that this is my wide end and that's my point end. Because I always get confused which, which one did I just do last. The only thing that'll do is it will make your shape just a little bit different, but it's not a big it's not a big deal. You can do these with any, you know, it doesn't matter if your paper is perfect or not. And again, just line up the point and line up the mark. Um, you know, your paper can be off. You can just cut these by hand, and I'm not catching right here. And I think it's because this box is too soft underneath. I'm just going to trim that one off there. Okay, so that's how you do your half inches, and you just continue across the paper. For the one inch one, we will line up around line up our line no nope. line up our very first corner the very edge corner of the paper with that little point mark that we made okay and then we are going to line up because my thing is down here I know that that's my wide side I'm going to line up the very point of this with my one inch mark, leave it down here, and yep. Sorry about that. If I had this on a table, hot, hard table surface, I know this is my wide end, so I'm going to go with my point up there and my very f next mark here. Line those up where my blade's going to go. And there we go. And that's how you do a one inch. And that's just so that you get an actual cone shape to it instead of like one straight edge and one angled edge. So that's how you cut your paper. And I will be right back and show you how to color them before you roll them. Okay, I'm back to show you how to color your papers before you roll them. You're going to need a wet paper towel. Um, you're going to need something to put your beads on after they're done. So I just take a paper clip, open it up, and then I take the big end and just kind of put it on an angle. And then what I do, let's see if I can show you this. I just hang them on the edge of my paintbrush holder like this so that I can just put my beads on there to let them dry so that they don't stick to anything. And then having a piece of parchment, because as you fill them up, the first one that you started with should be kind of dry by the time you get back to it. So you can take that off and set it on a piece of parchment so it, if it's not completely dry, it doesn't stick to something. You'll need um, your regular school glue, a skewer, and some markers. So what I've done, and if you don't have, if you didn't get the paper cutter, um, you can just cut them yourself by hand. And all I do is I make my marks the same way, but instead of cutting, I just draw lines. And then you can just cut them with scissors. So I just wanted to say that also. So the way to color these, um, we'll start with, just move some of these over. Oh, and I have some here. This is the little kid's paper that I got at the Dollar Tree. It's kind of like a newsprint. It's called a scribble pad. And um, I really like the way that these take that these take the marker. I've um, just got the back of one of my pads here so that you can see. And to do the rainbow ones, all you do, the, what you're going to do with all of them, is you are going to color down probably about an inch. And you're going to color the whole thing. What this is going to do is this is going to make the inside of your bead colored so that you don't see the white inside your bead and then for the rainbow ones you just you don't have to color the whole thing you just have to go down the edge just like a couple of widths wide with your color so you don't have to use um, your marker up completely and you just put in your rainbow colors I did that red way too long 
So we'll just do the red and make sure that you just, the only thing you have to make sure that you get is get the edges. You have to get those edges or otherwise it will show. Red, orange, yellow, definitely not gonna get all the way through all of our colors. I'm not, not gonna have enough room. I'll put some green on there. And when you get down to the point, you are gonna wind up um, going all the way across just because it's so skinny. I am gonna get all the colors on here. Red, orange, yellow, green, blue, purple. Okay, so this is the side that's going to show. Now, if you have a thicker piece of paper, on this piece of paper, everything sinks through, but you're gonna to wanna to do the back side of that one inch because that's gonna be the inside of your bead. So that's really where you wanna have that colored. And then you just take your skewer, use the, use the flat end because the other end is kind of um, beveled a little bit. And then you're just gonna roll them up. I'm sure that like everyone knows how to make paper beads, but I just wanted to show you like how to color them. And I just wanted to, whoops, you have to open your glue before you use it. And just put, don't put any glue at the very beginning because you don't want to glue it to your skewer. And then you just roll it and try and keep it kind of centered. And see the, the middle part doesn't show and that's why you don't have to color that. And you don't have to have glue the whole way. But you definitely want to have it on about the last inch. at least and what you're going to do is just take your glue and just run it down there it's going to wind up being too much the whole thing is covered with glue but that's okay when you get to the point then you just take that glue on your finger and roll it all over your bead and that makes your bleed your bead all glued together like that and then you're just going to take that off you're just going to slide it off onto your just line up the hole with the, and then you're just gonna do that and then just hang it up. So that's how you do those. Now wipe your finger off because you don't wanna get that glue on the next one and wipe your skewer off. Okay, so just to do a regular colored bead, all you do is just make sure that you do a couple widths wide and make sure you get the edges. And make sure that you, um. Now you can, what you can do, especially with the thicker paper, is just do the whole front side of your bead and then flip it over and do that inch. So that the inside of your bead has color to it so that nobody sees that. And get the edge, make sure you get that edge so that the edge is not white. Okay, and this one I'm gonna I'm gonna roll one with a flat bottom and pointy at the top. So basically all you do when you roll this one is just make sure that you roll this line all together. Make make it even instead of trying to center your point, you're going to just line up this bottom part of the bead. Put a little glue on that. And then just keep on rolling. And if you have to adjust a little bit, you just can move it a little bit and it works just fine. The biggest thing is make sure that you have glue on that point, on the underside of that point. Because otherwise, even though you're doing this, that point won't want to stick down because there's no glue underneath of it. You're just putting glue on top of it. And there we go. I'll wipe off my fingers. Grab another one of my paper clips. Oh, and that one just wants to stick. You don't want to make it too tight. 
Okay, I just made a whole bunch of beads this morning and I've never had one of them stick. Okay, what I'm, there we go. Kind of twist it a little bit and then stick it on there and then hang it up to dry and I'll be right back. Okay, now I'm back to show you how to get the color inside of a black bead. Um, again, what we're gonna do is we're just gonna start with black on the, well, you don't have to do black on the inside. You can actually do the color on the inside or the black on the inside. Either way, you're gonna put that color, black or your other color, on your end. So that's gonna be your inside. And then the side that's going to show, um, if it's gonna be a black bead, if you want just a black covering, you're gonna go just basically wide enough that by the time you get to the end of that bead, this, this bit of paper will go all the way around. Now, if you want it to be kind of half and half, you want it to be um, a colored center with a thicker black edge on it instead of just one or two little strips of paper, then what you'll do is you will bring Let's say we'll go half and half. We'll take the black, and all you need to do is you need to just do the edge. Now, we don't even need to come in because this is a flat piece of paper. It's, it's a rectangle piece of paper. The only thing that's going to show at all is the edge of that bead, just like you were edging um, one of your pieces of artwork or something. And then you're just going to take um, your color that you want to have in there, and again, just make sure that you're getting this on the edge of the paper. Not this side, but the actual edge here. This is this is what you're working for, is to get the color right here. So um, you're just gonna take that and make sure that you get it there on the edge. Doesn't matter how messy it looks because you're not gonna see any of that. Now I'm gonna take my skewer and we're just gonna roll it up. And you just want to keep it lined up as you go. So I kind of put my thumb here and kind of keep pushing it that way. And then also you can line it up too when you get, um, when you take it off, you can just push on both ends. So I'm going to put some glue on here. And the only place that you want to make sure that you get it really well is at the end. You need to make sure that you cover that whole end just like you need to make sure that you cover the point. Now, hopefully this bead is wide enough for you to see the two colors. Um, if you want your bead to be thicker, all you do is use a longer strip of paper. So I cut these the short way on my paper. You can cut them the long way, like the 11 inch way, instead of the eight and a half inch way, and your bead will be thicker. And if you want it even thicker than that, you can add another piece of paper to it and continue going. So now I'm just gonna push the two ends together. I'm gonna show you if you can see that, see how it's black in the center, and then it's purple, and then it's black on the outside. And I'm just gonna set that over here to dry. So that's how you get the centers. So any bead um, that you want to and maybe that's why my bead stuck the last time. My paper towel is really wet, so after you wipe it, you kind of want to dry it off a little bit. Um, any bead that you want to color, let's do a one inch one. Um, different colors, that's how you do it. And you just make sure, I'm not gonna use this one because it doesn't work as well. Um, just make sure that you, you remember to color the end that's gonna be inside. And then on the triangle shaped beads, you do have to come in a couple of strokes because, because you're doing them on the triangle. Um, you know, a little bit of that edge shows at each round as you go round and round. So you need a little bit of color there. And then the whole point. And there we go, we'll just do one more. Oops, and see, this is not quite as colored, and that's going to be the inside of my bead. And of course, it is the inside of your bead, so it's not really going to show much anyways, but I just want to make sure that that's actually got the dark blue on it. 
you don't actually have to do that part on this side because, oops, on this side because it's the outside, so you're not going to necessarily see it, but because it's going to be rolled up. There we go. And then you just kind of line that up. Um, I think what I'm going to do after this video is over in the next day or so um, is I am going to do a tutorial on making your own bead holder for rolling beads. And um, and then we'll make some kind of a little bead stand to, to hold our paper clips so that we can just have it right there and hang it up. Now on this one I didn't put any glue on it and that's totally okay. It was rolling so fine that I didn't even want to stop. Didn't think about it because I was talking but you got to make sure you get that last inch and then just take that glue and use what's on your finger to roll it all the way and that is what will seal your bead up. That one turned up really nice. I have a hard time getting these centered. It's probably why I like the ones that are flat on the bottom. Not really, I just like the shape of the others. So, but I will be back in just a minute and I'm gonna really quick roll up a couple of white ones and then I'll be back and we'll, oh, I already have some. So I'll be back and we'll paint some. Okay, I'm back and I realized that we didn't do a black one so I'll sh we'll just do a black one really quick so that we have it to play with, a solid black one. And to do the solid black, all you're going to do is you're going to color your inside Flip it over and color your outside end. And your outside end needs to be a little bit longer just because it has to go all the way around the already wrapped bead where the inside only has to go around the skewer before it touches the paper again. So, and then you just take your marker and start at the top. Make sure that you start at the top because if you didn't get those edges very well, they're going to show white and then we're just going to edge it and make sure that you get all of this also both sides especially with the black the black kind of if you leave some white it shows up really distinctly and then at the end that's your outside you're going to want to make sure that you go across the top so that that doesn't have a little white mark on it then we're just going to take our inside and roll it just like all the rest. And this will just give us a solid black bead that we can decorate with. You can put little um, bits of nail polish on there, like just little dots. And I like to do it with a white pen and just draw little zigzags or lines or, oh, sorry about that, you can't even see, or something like that. Um, I think that that's just really cool with the white standing out against the black. And so this is just going to wind up being a solid black bead when we're done. And then we're going to finish off the ones that we did. And of course a white bead is easy enough. You just cut the paper and you just roll it. But the only thing I don't like about the white beads is, is that then you have to figure out what you're going to do about the inside not showing. That's the only hard part. Um, I don't like the inside to be white. And there we go. There is our solid black bead, inside and out. And I'm going to hang that up to hang that up to dry if I can. <laughs> I can't. Okay can't see the there we go I couldn't see it okay so these are the four that we just did um we'll start with the white ones and what you're gonna do make sure that I don't have any glue on my stick and then make sure that it's kind of dry um is you're gonna put your bead back on your skewer because your skewer is the same size as the bead and that is the easiest way to hold it because it holds it fairly tight so just put that on there and then when you're painting it it doesn't want to move as much as if you were to if you were to like leave it on the clo on the paper clip um then it would be moving all over the place so you can stripe them you can just color them to make them darker you can do extra coats and what i do with these ones is you paint them first don't bother doing the ends because when you put it on the paper clip, that end is going to want to stick to the paper clip. 
um, and, and you're going to get it all over your skewer, which you also don't want to do. So you're just going to go ahead and just do the sides. And then when the sides are dry, when you can hold it with your fingers, then you can hold on to it and do the ends. And then I just blow on it a couple of times before I stick it on the paper clip. But mostly I don't want to get that on my skewer because it's very sticky and it also winds up being a different size. Then I have to get a new um I have to get a new skewer to use when I want to make some more beads because that nail polish will make it so that it doesn't work right. Okay, remember last time? Shut the fingernail polish. Okay, so now this is one that I did earlier. And I'm just dropping all over. And so now I'm going to do the ends. And the first thing I'm going to try and do, because this is a pretty big brush, I need to get down inside so that I don't have that white inside. And that's totally up to you whether that bothers you or not. I think it just looks a little more finished if the inside does not look white. And then you have to kind of, this one's got a little bit of a groove there, so I'm trying to get down into that groove. There we go, to make sure that that gets painted. And then I'm just going to kind of go around the edge. And what I will probably do after this is I will put one more coat of green on it and it will cover up where I, if I got any green along the edges. You just want to do it like that. And then just blow on it a little bit so it can dry a little bit because you've got wet nail polish on the inside, wet nail polish on the ends, or you can just put it here. I took out this parchment. I'll just set it sideways on the parchment. Now I don't have to worry about it sticking to anything. Okay, then you can also use your correction pen to draw on your black ones. And you can just, you know, you can do whatever you want. Maybe do a zigzag this way. Oh, now see, what did I tell you? Put it on your skewer because that makes it so much easier. I have to kind of rest my hands on the table. It helps keep it just a little bit more steady. And you can take your time, you know, when you're doing this. Whoops. I was going to put a dot there, except I moved it. So now I'm, that dot's going to be a line. And then maybe put a zigzag at the top also. And this would look much cuter if I was taking a little bit more time. But it will still turn out looking pretty cool. And you can use these on your journals, on like the, the clips that we made last week. You can actually use them to make jewelry. You can use them to make little um, dangly clips. But isn't that really cute with the, with the white on the black? I just love that. And that one I'm going to put on a paper clip. Oh, and that's the one with the purple on the inside. And then you can just cover them however you want to. And I'm gonna use the I'm gonna use the pointy end to decorate. I forgot to tell you that. I was pushing them onto the other end. They're easier to put back on on the pointy end. So and then I'm just gonna on this one. Oh that's funny. I chose the orange one this time to put the sparkles on. And I chose the orange one last time to put the sparkles on when I was making the samples. Except this is silver sparkle and the other was gold. And you just put that on there until it's how you want it to look. And there we 
go. That's how that one looks. And the nice thing with your nail polishes, you can use that, you know, the clear nail polish really makes them shine. And the more coats you put on it, the glassier it looks. If that's a word, glassier. We'll put that on there. But um, I just, I'm going to do the little rainbow one with the clear coat. And then I use my white ones to um, paint with the nail polish because like I said, you can't pa really paint with the nail polish beforehand. And then the only thing you have to do is just remember after they're good and dry um, to, do the, to do the hole and to do the ends. And that's the nice thing about coloring prior to is everything is, but when you're done rolling, other than putting some kind of a clear coat on it, um, you're done. All your color is there, and they really do, they look so pretty. Hope you can see that. Just kind of line that up and drop it on there. So that is it. That's how you make your homemade beads in all different shapes and sizes and with different mediums. Don't forget to close your nail polish. Thank you very much for watching. I really appreciate it. And I will be back in just one second with what we're going to need for next week. Okay, I'm back with what we're going to need for next week. So next week we are going to need some acetate packaging. Hopefully you've saved some. If not, you can see what we're doing. And if you want to do it the next time you get a package with... Um, with some of the hard plastic acetate on it. You can just cut it off and make one. And um, then we're going to need this 12-in-1 screwdriver set from the Dollar Tree. Um, we need the set that's like this. It's got little sockets in it, and then it's got the screwdrivers. The handle closes up. Um, but this is what you need is this set where you can put the different ones in the end, and it has the sockets in there. So we'll need this, and that is from the Dollar Tree. It's called tool bench and it's in their tool department we will also need this precision screwdriver set and these are little tiny precision screwdrivers they go from like um, 1 16th of an inch to 3 30 seconds and 1 16th to 3 30 seconds oh in both the Phillips and the flatheads so you're going to need to get this little precision set from the Dollar Tree we are going to need this fix it all super glue adhesive. You don't want the regular super glue and you don't really want regular glue for this project. We're going to be making some tools for our crafting and um, you know we're going to want them to hold up. So this fix it all adhesive um, to me works really well like the E6000 does. So if you get this is the one that you're going to want to get. Um, you know, let me turn it around so you can see actually what the front looks like. Of course I had to try and make sure everything was going to work the way I thought it might. So this is what you're going to need to get. And then a package of beads from, this is from Walmart for 98 cents. What you want to have, and if you have an old necklace or, or some old beads around, then you don't even need to get this, but we need round beads. And they just had this under all their hang-up beads. There were some little bins, and they had all different sorts of little packages for 98 cents. Some of them were all the same size. You're going to want to try and get this one with the different size beads in it, and you want round, different size round beads. So like here's like three different little sizes right here um, up to like even there's a big one right there. So that's what you're going to want to get. You're going to need four um, or five different round beads. So that's what we're going to need for next week and that will be one, two, three, four. So for next week we're saving a dollar. We saved two dollars um, no, we saved $4 this week because all we had to get was the skewers and we had $2 in our bank. So now we have $7 in our bank working towards our heat gun. So, and these are the beads. I just put them all on a string. So I really love the way that the black and white ones look. I think that those are just really, those are really nice. You could really do something that's more classy I think like with those and of course they need a, a clear coat on them to make them shine but even the bright colors are very pretty so I really appreciate all of your support in the series I really appreciate you watching and leaving comments thank you very much I hope that you enjoyed making the beads and I hope that you all have an outstanding day bye bye